This unusual, extraordinary, tropical island, once populated by miniature elephants, giant storks and vultures, and home to giant rats and Komodo dragons, was once home to a strange, but astonishing hominin, called Homo floresiensis, also well known as the Hobbit. The smallest human species in history, standing approximately 3 feet and 6 inches tall. The size of an average 4-year-old child. In fact, when Homo floresiensis was first discovered, archaeologists thought it must be the skeleton of a modern human child. However, the tiny skull had defined brow ridges, which are not characteristic of modern humans, and the individual had fully developed wisdom teeth, indicating it was an adult, not a child. This species regardless of its size, still roamed, foraged, and hunted large game. The discovery of Homo floresiensis has had significant implications for our understanding of human evolution. The unique morphological features of Homo floresiensis, including its diminutive stature and small brain size, demonstrates a new range of biological diversity in the genus Homo. The fossils of Floresiensis date to between about 100,000 and as recently as 50,000 years ago, with some studies saying they clung on as recently as 12,000 years ago, making them living in Southeast Asia as the same time as modern humans. Stone tools made by these species date all the way back to 190,000 years ago. This human was first found in 2004, by a joint Indonesian-Australian research team found a specimen they named LB1, who died around the age of 30. Who was a near-complete female skeleton of a tiny human that lived in Liang Bua Cave on the island of Flores, Indonesia. Interestingly, Flores has always been separated from mainland Asia, even at low sea levels the water crossing was at least 24 kilometers so maybe the hobbits were one of history's first sailors, making the journey on some sort of ancient raft. Another hypothesis is that their arrival might have been an act of nature. A powerful storm or tsunami could have washed a small group of the hominids out to sea, and then floating vegetation carried them to Flores. That idea sounds implausible, but it's also an explanation for how monkeys reach South America. This hypothesis is that monkeys living along the Atlantic coast of Africa were swept up in intense storms and found themselves at sea. These primates clung to storm debris that formed natural rafts. Currents carried these platforms of vegetation across the ocean, so it wouldn't be the first time in history it has happened. Scientists will probably never know for certain what the hobbits' ancestors went through to get to Flores. Such ancient wooden boats are unlikely to be preserved and there's no way to prove it was a freak accident. The skeleton's unique traits such as its small body and brain size led scientists to assign the skeleton to a new species, Homo floresiensis, named after the island on which it was discovered. Since the initial find, bones and teeth representing as many as 12 floresiensis individuals have been recovered at Liambua the only site where Floresiensis has been found so far. LB1 has the only complete skull to be recovered, but a second lower jaw and numerous skeletal elements from a second individual, LB6, was also discovered in 2004. Fossils of at least four other individuals have also been recovered, confirming that this was a population of small-bodied individuals and that LB1 was not an anomaly. Floresiensis has an unusual mix of ancestral traits that remained unchanged from more ancient species and derived traits that linked it with more recent ones. The skull resembles those belonging to extinct species of our own genus Homo. The skeleton, however, is considerably more primitive and in some respects aligns with older and even more primitive species like those belonging to Australopithecus afarensis which includes the famous Lucy. This is a unique pattern as Floresiensis, a population that existed between maybe just 50 to 12,000 years ago, with a skull that most closely resembles the much older Homo habilis and Homo erectus, and a skeleton that retains features commonly associated with Australopithecus species 3 to 4 million years old. The key physical features of Homo floresiensis was obviously its very small stature, standing around just 1 meter tall, or about 3 feet 6. 
which is far shorter than the smallest of populations of modern humans in the world, such as the pygmies, who stand at around 1.5 meters, or about 4 feet 11. It had a wide pelvis, especially compared to us modern humans with our narrow pelvises, making it easier for female floresiensises to give birth. They also had hunched shoulders, displaying only 110 degrees of humeral torsion, well below modern human shoulder configuration, so it would make it hard for the hobbit to make sophisticated tools. Its brain shows a combination of features not seen in other hominin species. It has a small brain, averaging 330 cubic centimeters, the same as a chimpanzee, but has an enlarged broadman area 10, which studies have shown an area of the brain that appears to help with complex cognitive activities. Their cranial shape is long and low, similar to that of Homo erectus, and had a receding and small forehead, with a flat face and narrow nose. For its small size, it had a large, strong jaw and large teeth. Floresiensis had a bony shelf at the front of the lower jaw which is a primitive feature, not seen in later humans. Bones and joints of the arm, shoulder and the lower limbs suggest that Floresiensis was also more similar to early humans than modern humans in this way. Other primitive features include a relatively long foot for its body size, it was 70% as long as the thigh bone, in comparison with modern humans with 55%. Its feet also a flat arch lacking the spring-like mechanism used to store and release energy during running, making the hobbit not a very efficient long-distance runner. These features are similar to ancient hominins such as Homo habilis and Australopithecines. Also because of their long feet Floresiensis would have had to had to bend their knee further back than modern humans do, resulting in a sort of high-step gait, and would have looked rather peculiar. The hobbit also had an unusual low twist in the upper arm bone, and wide leg bones compared to the length. It had relatively long arms, and their wrist bones differ significantly from the those of modern humans and are more similar to African apes or Australopithecines. They lack features that evolved with the ancestors of modern humans at least about 800,000 years ago. Leading to a tough question for scientists. Did they make their journey to Flores hundreds of thousands of years before some studies suggest? Or did they evolve these more primitive characteristics because of evolutionary pressures after landing on the island? Even though their ancestors were probably small as well, evolutionary pressures were probably what made the hobbits so little. There are several theories as to why Homo floresiensis was so small. The diminutive stature and small brain of Homo floresiensis may have resulted from insular dwarfism, also known as island dwarfism. An evolutionary process that results from long-term isolation on a small island, with limited food resources and a lack of large predators to defend themselves against. Pygmy elephants on Flores, now extinct, showed the same adaptation. There are several proposed explanations for the mechanism which produces such dwarfism. One is a selective process where only smaller animals trapped on the island survive, as food periodically declines to a borderline level. The smaller animals need fewer resources and smaller territories, and so are more likely to get past the breakpoint where population decline allows food sources to replenish enough for the survivors to flourish. Smaller size is also advantageous from a reproductive standpoint, as it entails shorter gestation periods and generation times. The initial theory of the team who discovered Homo floresiensis originally proposed that a population of the species Homo erectus traveled to Flores from Java, perhaps by boat. And once on Flores they shrunk in size over hundreds of thousands of years, due to island dwarfism. However, the Australopithecine-like physical characteristics of Homo floresiensis suggested evolved from a far more ancient and smaller ancestor than Homo erectus. Some other scientists suggested that Homo floresiensis is not a distinct species but rather a population of Homo sapiens with a condition such as microcephaly, where the brain develops to a smaller size. However, there are no known diseases or conditions in Homo sapiens that match what we find in Homo floresiensis. While we don't have all the answers as to how it developed its unique set of traits, 
Homo floresiensis is a distinct human species from us. Scientists aren't yet sure how long ago Homo floresiensis evolved, but there is evidence that its ancestor lived on Flores for hundreds of thousands of years. Stone tools found at the Wolo Sedge site on Flores indicate that an early human species was present on Flores about one million years ago. In addition, fragments of human fossils dated to about 700,000 years ago were discovered at Mata Menge in central Flores. These fossils include teeth that are the same size or even smaller than those found at Liangbua, supporting the idea that Homo floresiensis, or its ancestor, was on Flores at least 700 thousand years ago. Stone tools made definitely by Floresiensis were found in a number of different layers dating from 190,000 to 50,000 years ago. Tools include simple flakes, points, perforators, blades and microblades which were possibly hafted as barbs. Some were found with the remains of LB1, but most came from the same location as the remains of the extinct pygmy elephant Stegodon. This suggests that Floresiensis was hunting these small elephants. Stone tools produced by heavier percussion were also recovered from layers not associated with Floresiensis occupation. These tools date to between 118,000 and 194,000 years ago. The makers are unidentified. There has been some speculation that the stone tools associated with Homo Floresiensis were actually made by Homo sapiens. The basis for this is purely the belief that humans with such small brains couldn't make such sophisticated stone tools that there is no other evidence in support of this. However, those studying the tools claim they are not as sophisticated as they appear and regard them as simple. Analysis of the residues and polish on some of the tools revealed they were used for working wood and fibrous materials, perhaps to make spear shafts or items such as traps. Cut marks on the stegodon bones also suggest some of the tools were used to process meat. Precursors to this tool kit may come from earlier sites on Flores. Tools excavated in 2004 from Matamenj, which is about 50 kilometers from Liangbua, are at least 700,000 years old, and those from the Soa Basin date to about 880,000 years old. Toolkits from both sites show some similarities and technological continuity with those found in Liangbua Cave. The identity of the makers is unknown, but they could possibly be ancestral to Homo floresiensis. There is evidence of the use of fire in Liangbua Cave. The remains of numerous juvenile stegodon have charred bones, possibly indicating that Homo floresiensis was able to control fire for cooking. But a new 2023 study states it is apparent that the charcoal and burnt bone previously associated with Homo floresiensis is, instead, due to modern human activity from the past 40,000 years. Which would also make sense with the human migration timeline, with humans traveling through this part of Asia, and making their way into Australia possibly as early as 65,000 years ago. We don't know much about the diet of Homo floresiensis. Current evidence suggests it involved both plants and uncooked meat, with tooth wear indicating a tough, fibrous diet that required lots of forceful chewing. It is likely that Homo floresiensis ate raw meat from stegodons, Komodo dragons and rodents, the remains of which have all been found in the Liangbua cave. In terms of art and burials, there have been no traces of pigments ornaments, or deliberate burials in the layers associated with the hobbit all of which characterize the modern human levels from the upper parts of the cave. With the unique traits of Homo floresiensis, it is very hard to pinpoint who the true ancestor is of them. At first floresiensis was suggested to have evolved from Asian Homo erectus, who somehow found themselves on the island, and gradually shrunk because of the island's resources. The identity of the mysterious hobbit has once again been turned on its head. New research suggests the tiny hominin evolved from an unknown ancestor that was the first to ever venture out of Africa. Now, the most comprehensive analysis yet suggests the hobbits were, in fact, descended from a mystery ancestor that lived in Africa over two million years ago. Some members of this ancestral group remained in Africa and evolved into Homo habilis while others made their journey east and miraculously found themselves on Flores, and slowly evolved into a different species in response to their changing environment. 
the last known trace of Homo floresiensis dates to about 50,000 years ago, with the earliest evidence of Homo sapiens on Flores appearing shortly after, about 46,000 years ago. This means that Homo floresiensis is one of several early human species that went extinct during the period when modern humans were starting to flourish around the world. Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo luzonensis and possibly Homo erectus also seem to have become physically extinct as modern humans were spreading and growing in number. So why did Homo floresiensis go extinct? We can't say for sure. However, it is a possibility that the extinction of floresiensis and the emergence of Homo sapiens are connected in some way, with Homo sapiens outcompeting them for resources, or maybe killing them. Like what seems to be the case when modern humans come into contact with other human species. A study done by a team in 2018 revealed a huge volcanic eruption that took place around 50,000 years ago on the island, coinciding with the disappearance of Homo floresiensis. And three other large species found on Flores, giant storks, vultures and dwarf elephants. By 46,000 years ago, these creatures were no longer present on the island. The team said successive volcanic eruptions probably had a major influence on how the hobbits responded to the climate of Flores, and may well have played a role in the species' extinction. Potentially, the eruption disrupted the ecosystem, making it impossible for Floresiensis to survive. Researchers note that the dwarf elephants, which had a body mass of about 570 kilograms and were about the size of a small cow, likely formed an important part of the diet of Floresiensis. If they disappeared as the result of the volcano, it could have caused a domino effect on the rest of the ecosystem. Volcanic eruptions may have just been part of the story, however. And we don't know for sure what exactly caused the demise of the hobbits. In Indonesian folklore, the indigenous Nage people that now live on the island of Flores, describe a group of human-like creatures that lived in nearby caves and forests. They called these people Abugogo. In the Nage language of Flores, Abu means grandparent, and Gogo means one who eats anything. The Nage people described the Abugogo as having been able walkers and fast runners, and around 1.5 meters tall. They reportedly had wide and flat noses, broad faces with large mouths and hairy bodies. They were said to have murmured in what was assumed to be their own language, and could reportedly repeat what was said to them in a parrot-like fashion. They also told this same story to Dutch colonizers of the island 400 years ago. Other local indigenous tribe, called the Leo, claims to cite ape-like creatures they call the Laihoe, which means ape men. Some people have suggested that the hobbits are still alive, and there have been claimed sightings of little, hairy humans or human-like individuals in the forests. Skeptics think it's unlikely that a population big enough to sustain itself could have remained largely unobserved given the island's small size and density of occupation. While there is a community of people of shorter than average height living on Flores today, they are not genetically related to Homo floresiensis. We don't know everything about our early ancestors, but we keep learning more. Paleoanthropologists are constantly in the field, excavating new areas with groundbreaking technology, and continually filling in some of the gaps about our understanding of human evolution. There are still some unanswered questions about Homo floresiensis that may be answered with future discoveries, such as Which hominin species made the one million year old stone tools found on Flores? How did these early humans manage to get to the island of Flores? Did Floresiensis have language, make art, and have other forms of cultural expression? Did Homo floresiensis and our species, Homo sapiens, ever come into contact with one another? How similar is the DNA of Homo floresiensis to the DNA of other human species? So far, no DNA has been retrieved from the bones of a Homo floresiensis individual. And was a volcanic eruption on Flores the reason the hobbit went extinct? Feel free to comment below on what you think about these interesting questions.